Hello everyone and welcome back to more testing in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul and Real Visual Enhancements, though a somewhat modified version of Real Visual Enhancements now, as I will explain. But first, we have the shuttle. And I'm going to test the shuttle in 1.12. This is exactly the same shuttle that I had in 1.8.1. I just copied it over directly from the 1.8.1 install. And so it is installed the same way and with the same configurations. Now, with Realism Overhaul, they have configurations for the Space Shuttle. I deleted those in the RO Suggested Mods section. Now, there, there will be problems with that because things have changed. And in particular, I'm already aware that uh, the way they've done pressurization and the requirements are different now. Um, basically, here I have a highly pressurized tank, right? Highly pressurized, true. Shuttle OMS pod, right? It is highly pressurized. But... This still says needs high pressure tanks, pressure fed, and is not happy with it. Why is that? Well, that is because they have changed the, I think, I think, it is because they have changed the engine such that they have helium as a requirement for the AJ-10-190, which is okay. There ought to be helium in the OMS pods as well, but of course then we have to change the configuration. And I wanted to start off with the all the configurations exactly the same so that we can test it like that and then we'll make the fixes as necessary so that you know what I do. Um, so if you've looked at my shuttle installation videos for 1.8.1, especially the one that had the shuttle upgrade, then this is basically that shuttle. And one thing, uh, the two things that people tend to ask about, first of all, if you can't switch the type of texture, if you're stuck on one or another like Discovery or something, that is probably because you do not have B9 part switch, which is the mod that allows for that as it is written in the configuration for the shuttle. So yeah, you will need that. And that would have been uh, something that came with the shuttle package if you downloaded from the forums, I believe, or they would have said that that was a requirement. Uh, the other thing is KSP wheel. If you're having trouble with landing gear, uh, the mod KSP wheel is probably what you need. We are going to test it as is, and then we'll see what's wrong with it. So, we are launching. Now, the RCS does not, thankfully, require the helium, and that is because they 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 changed what they changed in Realism Overhaul was the AJ10190 generalized configuration. They did not te uh, change the configuration that is specific to the shuttle. The, these parts. These parts uh, had their own configuration for the RCS, so they didn't change that. But the AJ-10-190 that is on here, and probably the RS-25s as well, point to the configuration that comes with Realism Overhaul. If I break that connection, then this will probably work just fine and not say needs high pressure tanks. So we already know that the OMS system doesn't work. Let's just uh, throw that out there. And I have made one little tweak to my regular launch script, and that is to reduce the amount of time that the steering manager is allowed to take on a certain maneuver. That basically the turnaround when we actually fired OMS engines, it turns out that I think they've tweaked that a little bit, so I've adjusted that, but that's a minor change, the steering manager change but uh, we'll see how it works if it wiggles too much we're going to a 51.4 degree inclination and we will see what happens now the other thing is the looks of the thing right i have been struggling to make everything look as good as it used to or better and you can see i've got my uh stuff from real launch sites in here that's just placed by kerbal constructs so the mod relaunch sites comes with those models for the shuttle pad and everything, and I've just brought those in. And But they needed some repositioning to make sure that they worked right. Now, I've deleted two layers of clouds. There were three layers of clouds, low, medium, high. Uh, they didn't look right, so I've deleted the medium and high. We only have the low ones now. And I deleted the city lights from real visual enhancements. They weren't looking good, and uh, in certain circumstances, they were covering the entire world. So, I decided that maybe that was too much. I got my monument launcher pier, you see there, uh, for testing the monument launcher. It's in here now. 
and I have uh, I found something out about re real visual enhancements regarding its scatterer configs. So it has a folder called scatterer configs, and it has subfolders for the various planets, and some of those configurations point to a folder that does not exist. In particular, they're pointing to the Extreme Visual Overhaul folder because the configurations were taken from Extreme Visual Overhaul and adapted for real visual enhancements, but they're supposed to, those configurations are supposed to be pointing to the real visual enhancements folder that contains the same things. They still point to the EVO folder instead. So I've changed that. Uh, it was just pointing to the wrong, wrong folder because it was derived. Okay, booster set works fine. I do put additional separatrons on the boosters for safety's sake. I'm still not entirely thrilled with the look of everything. It's a little bit too blue. I have I have some sneaky business that I might be able to put to use. I have decided to add reshade. Well, I will add reshade. I don't have it right now, but I will add reshade. I feel like, and we really need to start the fuel cell and APU and everything. Um, I feel like just having high resolution is not really necessarily better. You can have high resolution textures, but if they're implemented badly, they make it look worse. So having 64K is great and all, but only if it really is implemented well. Uh, I really need to find a way to make the land more distinct. It's too, it's all too blue. Um, I turned off the lightning. I decided that the lightning looked a lot like artifacts instead of actual lightning. You know, they looked like something has gone wrong instead of lightning striking. So I decided that we would just skip the lightning. Oh, so I am using KS3P, not uh, TUFX. I don't even know if KS3P is doing anything, frankly, but uh, we are using it, or trying to use it. I'll have to delete it and see if it made any difference. I have to figure out what's going on with the shadows. I remember that being a problem before, and some number needing to be changed, but I forget what that number is. I mean, should the vertical stabilizer be casting a shadow? I guess the vertical stabilizer would cast a shadow on the body there. So maybe... But it shouldn't be, like, intermittent. <laughs> so, I don't know. Okay, the shuttle is separating from the external tank. And we are time warping. And we'll see how it does on the maneuver to point at prograde after the time warp which is what I was suggesting. Uh, I expect that the OMS engine will not fire, in which case it will have to try to make orbit with RCS, and we'll see how that works, if it works or not. It will be instructive. I mean, it, will be, it would be a thing that it ought to be able to do. Okay, here's the turn. A little bit too vigorous still. Hmm... In previous versions, it needed to be more vigorous, but it seems like here it needs to be less, clearly. I may even not even set the max stopping time anymore. Used to have to set it, but I think maybe it's best not to. Well, it got there eventually, but now the long RCS burn to get to orbit. I'll fizz warp during this. One plus side of cutting out the city lights and extra cloud layers is that we're probably getting better performance, so there is that. Yep, well, we got to orbit just on the RCS, as we ought to. Okay, but let me... I'll be nice. Uh, I will not decouple the AJ-10-190 from the realism overall configuration, even though it's tempting. I am going to put the helium in the OMS pods to the right proportion and we will see if that works out to solve the OMS ignition problem. You can see they, they uh, activated but can't fire. 
In fact, let me show you how to do it so that you know, just in case you have to do it for some other engine because there's a high probability that there'll be some part that requires this to be done. And yeah, so here's how it works. First of all, open up in the Realism Overall folder, there is an engine configs folder and you need to find the engine config that you are trying to modify. And basically it would previously have had these propellants and they have added this one. Now you can see the helium is 12.9, whereas the MH is 0.4943. Gotta take 12.9, divide by 0.4943. So that will be the multiple of helium that we need. So I get 26.0975. And I go over to my OMS pod here, obviously open up the right part. I highlight that, copy, paste, I say helium here. And I take the original number of the MMH, 2992.16, multiply by 29.0975, which is what I got from the previous operation. And I get 78,087.9, rounding a bit. The RCS we're not going to change, but we have to also change the overall volume and then the pod on the other side. Now, I forget what ratio the helium is. I think it's 200, helium is a gas, so the volume is based on liquids. And since it's a compressed gas, I forget if it's 100 to uh, 1 or 200 to 1. I'm going to assume it's 200 to 1. So I'm going to take this number, divide by 200, and then add that to the volume. And in this case, we are going to get... Six thousand four hundred eighteen point one. This is just an easy general way of doing it. So I'm gonna take the whole module, find the. Oh, I guess it's uh, automatically referring to both shell pod, uh, shell OMS pods. So that's fine. So it's automatically for both. That'll be fine. But if there was a separate one, then we would have to do it separately. Okay. So this done. Let's see if it actually works to solve the pressurization problem. And back in the game, of course, we have to replace the original OMS pods. The contents of tanks is one thing that does not get updated in craft files. So, and now we have the helium. The question is whether it works properly. So we will launch again. I have made some other adjustments. I have added reshade as promised. Uh, I don't know, it's not my preferred way of fixing the look of the thing, though it does give us quite a few other options. If you haven't tried reshade with Kerbal, ah, sometimes it brings us to the stock pad first, on the first try to go out to the pad. I don't know why that is. Uh, Kerbal Constructs, do your thing. Uh, we have been set at, to launch Complex 39A, and we've got sort of a vin vignette effect on the outside. Pressing home brings it up. We've got a fake HDR. There's curves, which adjust the color of things. There's other loot effects, and this is the vignette. You can see it sort of darkens the edges so that it enhances the focus on the main scene. Uh, but there are other things that you can throw in there. Monochrome, uh, tint for a sepia sort of thing, and ASCII, I have no idea how they actually do this. Um, nostalgia for apparently games with fewer colors. The uh, Film grain, uh, I noted that the TUFX configuration tried to do film grain. Well, you can do a whole lot more with this as far as tweaking it probably. Um, uh, you can see some graininess there, but I don't actually want film grain. So, I think overall, oh yes, I wanted to edit the way it 
did the pointing maneuver for the OMS burn. So we'll readjust that. And launch. And I really need to make sure I action group the fuel cells and the APU. Let's just start all of that stuff. Somebody asked me why I liked real plumes over waterfall. Waterfall is too clean. It, I mean, yeah, waterfall is just too clean for me. I like the real plumes more for more of the engines. Some engines might be good for waterfall. I do need to get the Blizzy's toolbar back. I don't have that in here right now. One reason why reshade isn't such a good solution is that it doesn't distinguish between scenes. So it'll do the same thing in the in the VAB as it does in the flight screen. Whereas either KS3P or TUFX, they'll have different settings in different screens like the like the KSC view and then the SPH or VAB and the map view and all that stuff. So reshade is just uh, one thing for all the scenes. But it's a lot easier to tweak. That's one positive thing about it. As far as KS3P, I don't think there is a way in flight or in game to actually tweak its settings. Well, once this gets to orbit, you know what happens next. We have to test if it can re-enter properly. Okay. Uh, it's possible that KS3P just doesn't work in 1.12. I'm getting that general sense. So I'll have to figure out how to tweak TUFX. Unless somebody knows that KS3P does work in 1.12. I'll have to figure out how to tweak TUFX to do what I wanted to do instead. The existing configurations definitely did not do what I wanted them to do. Yes, it did the turn just fine without any steering manager adjustments this time. And that leads me to believe that for my re-entry script I should probably delete the steering manager adjustments that I have. It's possible that they're redundant now. Or it's possible everything could go wrong. But let's let's try that. I'm gonna go into it and just get rid of all the steering manager settings. And we will see what happens like that. So, our OMS engines do work now. Okay, we are in orbit. Well, an orbit anyway. I'm gonna go to the kind of orbit that I would normally get to for re-entry, a standard orbit. We have nothing in the cargo bay right now, so it's not like this is particularly a challenge, well, except for the docking port. As we can see, the helium is being consumed at the correct rate in relation to the MMH in Mon 3. Not that that's how a pressurization system works, but <laughs> we will we'll take it, I guess. It depends. I guess it's somewhat beneficial to the user that it works this way. The helium isn't very heavy overall, but a lot of the time the helium would be sticking around. You wouldn't be actually getting to dump it all. Overall, this actually helps with Delta V a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. So we'll boost up to a station like Apoapsis and Periapsis first and then bring it down again. Oh, here comes the surface. I'll leave you to judge whether what I've done is a good thing or not. Let's see, map view. This is what it looks like. It's still much bluer 
I'm used to a slightly more faded blue than this. This is a deeper blue than I usually have, but I prefer the clouds like this. Sorry. Sorry, triple layer clouds. I don't think that worked out right. Okay, that's good enough. I uh, might want to round that out a little bit, but it's one and a half hour orbit, so it is what I would consider a standard orbit, and we're going to just phase with Cape Canaveral again. Okay, well, in theory, the next go-around is the one we want to land on. We do have auroras. That I kept. All right. So again, I removed the steering manager adjustments that I had in 1.8.1, and we'll see how it works like that. So, fresh start here. Trying to land at Cape Canaveral. And we want Smart ASS off. And KOS is now in control again. Well, it's RCS thruster firing is good. Good enough, probably, for this turn. Let's see... Yeah, it seems to do just fine without any steering manager adjustments. Good enough. It's got some extra little firing though, but it's not using much MHN Mon 3 right now. One thing that will throw it out of balance is that if our RCS system does not use the helium, we'll be carrying extra helium, but that's probably alright. Like I said, helium is not very heavy. Well, there you go. Let me drop the UI. That's what it looks like right now. We'll see how it does the turnaround for the shuttle to get into the correct re-entry orientation. How much it uses on these sorts of maneuvers will largely determine what we get to use during the missions and whether we run out of fuel or not. So the better it does these, the better off we are for everything else. Now it seems to be doing pretty well compared to 1.8.1. Really slow to turn in roll here. But in the previous version it tended to wiggle back and forth a lot too. So maybe it's better if it's slow to turn. Why does it want to go in edge on like this? It's stopped trying to roll. But this is definitely not the right roll orientation. Hmm. I didn't notice it having this problem before. It seems to be turning really, really slowly, actually. I might have to change the max stopping time after, but I don't think it's really changing the rotation. A lesser known function of far is to see the roll angle. It is changing the roll orientation, but it's so slow. Yeah, I wonder why they have the roll rate. I mean, obviously, it turned to the right heading and pitch relatively quickly. But to have the roll rate only correcting by 0.1 degree per second seems wrong. It's going to have a heck of a time actually doing the S turns if it only rolls at this rate. Well, it's trying to do an S turn. You can see target roll there. Has it changed how quickly it's doing things? Well, it is changing its roll quicker now. Hmm. Well, I'll just have to use the active roll management part of the script a little bit earlier. This S turn part will just have to use its stuff earlier on in the script instead of only when we get low enough to do S turns. I only put it lower down in the script because I didn't want to waste RCS fuel, but it's better if we're not coming in at an angle.
So far, it's been very spare on using the RCS fuel, though, so there's a great improvement in that respect over 1.8.1. And that's all KOS coding, I assume, because the script itself hasn't really changed much. We are on track right now. Oh dear. We have overheating on the Elevons and other things. Like, I haven't changed the configuration, so something about heating must have changed. We sort of saw that earlier in my previous tests, where we saw Separatrons overheating that didn't used to overheat. Uh, now everything's overheating. Well, we lost that left Elevon. Hmm. The heat tolerances can't possibly get any higher than what I've put on here. So this is very odd. What have they done with real heat? And why have they done it? Hmm. Okay, well, uh, we're gonna have to figure out what they've done. It's, uh... Sheer I mean, I could pop up the numbers, but this shouldn't happen. We can see the internal temperature on the... Well, the cockpit didn't really explode yet. Let's take a look at the Elevon. 1600 and 2500. 1600 internal 2500K skin should be more than enough, uh, frankly speaking. Um, the OMS pods are a little bit... But I mean, yeah, I mean, this not really a whole lot of excuse for this. So I'll take a look at that and see what might be going on. But that is the first test of the shuttle in 1.12. We will see how I tweak it in the future. Uh, so uh, once I'm done figuring it out, I might release my configurations. But for now, let's call it a work in progress. So if you have any uh, suggestions for the visuals, uh, you can by all means comment on those as well. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.